Dr. Shankar is a established urologist in India. Respected uh, chairpersons, Professor Esar Farad, Dr. Lafti, and uh, Dr. Ham, and uh, the organizing team of uh, this conference, uh, Professor Isam, Professor Karim, and Hussein, and the seniors, my dear colleagues. At the outset, I thank the Egyptian Urology Society for inviting me for this live workshop as well as this talk. My talk today is thulium laser, thulium fiber laser in the ureter. No conflicts of interest, but I will be talking about the thulium fiber laser. The contents of my talk will focus on the introduction, overview of thulium fiber laser, clinical scenarios, literature and future of this. So you have seen homium laser for last 10, 20 years. Now, last 5 to 10 years, thulium fiber laser is coming. This is different from thulium laser. Now, for stone and prostate, for both, this thulium fiber laser is used. The main advantage is in, in stone. I will focus my talk in stone. It absorbs the by the water and bubbles are produced much faster than homium laser. It has very high frequency and very low energy. You can change. The degradation of the laser fiber is very, very less. And it focused beam is there, no dispersion. The laser is focused the way you focus. Side places don't go. The beam is very, very parallel. Retropulsion is less. There is no doubt. Morning, Professor Kisar was sharing that the new mission has come with very, very low retropulsion. So smaller dust can be produced because of the high frequency. Uh, are, we, are we overusing this? This is the primary mechanism everybody knows. It's the diode laser with thulium doped, ion doped, small tube, long tube, which produces the laser at the end. Honestly, there is no uh, shield in between the laser and the outer. That's why the maintenance is easy. This is a TD, 1940 nanometers is the uh, TFL wavelength where maximum absorption and producing, of producing the uh, bubbles. The scattering will not be there as I mentioned and the ablation rate is very fast. These are the evidence beyond doubt is present now. It's our paper where if you put large stones, if you put small stones, energy consumed for destroying the stone in large volume is much less in thulium fiber laser. This paper is published by us. Retropulsion I already mentioned, that is 1 is to 3 is to 2 between the TFL homium short and homium long. Primarily TFL is long pulse duration. Concerns, my topic is not all these. My topic is ureter. Everybody is saying that ureter gets damaged. What is the temperature that raised at the tip of the laser fiber is 45 degrees centigrade to 70 degrees centigrade. If you use 45 degrees centigrade for 15 seconds to 20 seconds, no damage happens. Cutoff level is after 45, whatever the laser you use, it may damage. The maximum damage happens at 60 degrees to 70 degrees, even short period of time. But many other factors are there. The most important factor is the outflow. The most important thing we have to remember in URSL is it is unilateral flow. Ureteroscopy you flush water 
you grab the drainage goes into the kidney it doesn't come out because ureter closes the ureteric lumen ureteroscope closes the ureteric lumen whereas in rirs the water goes in comes out through access sheet but it has rigid ureteroscope 6 by 7.5 in the ureter practically closes the outflow so if the outflow is not there temperature will raise that is the main problem in ursl now coming to the uh, energy and frequency if you use more energy more frequency no doubt temperature will raise what is high energy what is normal energy used one joule one joule what is the normal frequency used 10 hertz simple one joule 10 hertz is normal if you use three joules in bladder it's okay but not in ureter if you use 100 hertz in ureter it is too much from 10 to 100 it is too much one joule is normal 10 hertz is normal if you use two or three it's not normal if you use 100 to 100 it is not normal that's the main thing so majority of the times it is the human error by touching the laser to the ureter by keeping high energy by keeping high frequency you do wrong thing now coming uh, multiple variables can affect uh, the, the complication in the ureter temperature we cannot measure the temperature and the rate of fluid the time of lasing continuous or interrupted the type of laser so multiple factors we cannot predict what uh, is, uh, could affect but actually the tips and tricks you mentioned is very important to, to work at the safest side because with the development of flexible retroscopy we are shifting to more cases now to flexible retroscopy and we started to see the structure ureter more frequently than before and we were talking today morning i think the new era or game changer the tfl that comes with a tissue sensor there is a new laser came new to the market with a tissue sensor that can recognize the soft tissue from the hard tissue so once you are pressing the middle you are far away from the stone it will stop automatically so the direct trauma also to the ureter will be avoided by this kind of laser but uh, again the, the, uh, the, the considering these multiple factors is very important and thank you for highlighting this thank you thank you very much uh, so Chandra, for uh, for uh, i haven't uh, used a lot of um, uh, thulium but what the question comes to the hospital is of the thulium versus the homium is worth the uh, possible low risk of complications and especially we know that the urethral stricture is very hard to manage a complication um, would you stick or would you advise to people to stick with what they have at the end? I mean, most people are very familiar with the whole thing, but not the equipment. That's probably a shift of, of, of training and a shift of memory. You, you use the one technique and then you change the other. It's not always going to be easy to shift how you're doing your technique and uh, using less energy, using less um, uh, uh, time for lasering. You've used to something for a very long time with the whole thing. What's your take on that? Uh. See, the problem with the uh, Indian and the Egyptian environment is we can't buy both lasers in private practice. A lot of people are asking which laser to buy. If you are planning to do RIRS uh, with a nucleation, uh, if you can afford homium laser 100 watts is better. But thulium fiber laser is half of the cost and it can do a nucleation. It can do good uh, dusting. It can do a good PCNL lithotripsy also. So slowly things are moving towards TFL in India at least. So we should understand that the TFL is a coagulative laser. When you cut the bladder uh, tumor, it doesn't bleed at all. When you cut the enucleation, wherever plane you are, it doesn't bleed. But the same thing if you apply it ureter, it is disaster. So to my heart, TFL is slightly more dangerous to be used in ureter. So I, I prefer to use pneumatic. If at all a floating small stone is present, I push into the kidney and do RIRS. But I try to restrict myself, repeatedly use laser. If at all I use one, two, three, break it and remove it.
Thank you. Yes, if you use for a long time just because everything is okay, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, the heat will dissipate and damage. That's what happened in my first case. Large store dilated. I am using continuously for one hour. Entire unit got damaged. So intermittently short time better to use. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks, John. Just four minutes. Any questions from the audience? Sodium versus the hormium is worth the uh, possible low risk of complications, and especially we know that the urethral stricture is very hard to manage a complication. Um, would you stick or would you advise to people to stick with what they have in the air? Most people are very familiar with the hormium, but not the equipment. That's probably a shift of, of, of training and a shift of memory. You, you're used to one technique and then you change the other. It's not always going to be easy to shift how you're doing your technique. And, uh, using less energy, using less um, uh, uh, time for lasering, you've used to something for a very long time the whole What's your take on that? Uh, see, the problem with the uh, Indian and the Egyptian environment is we can't buy both lasers in private practice. A lot of people are asking which laser to buy. If you are planning to do RIRS uh, with a nucleation, uh, if you can afford homium laser 100 watts is better. But thulium fiber laser is half of the cost and it can do a nucleation. It can do good uh, dusting. It can do uh, good uh, PCNL lithotripsy also. So slowly things are moving towards TFL in India at least. So we should understand that the TFL is a coagulative laser. When you cut the bladder uh, tumor, it doesn't bleed at all. When you cut the enucleation, wherever plane you are, it doesn't bleed. But the same thing if you apply it ureter, it is disaster. So to my heart, TFL is slightly more dangerous to be used in ureter. So I, I prefer to use pneumatic. If at all a floating small stone is present, I push into the kidney and do RIRS. But I try to restrict myself, repeatedly use laser. If at all I use one, two, three, break it and remove it. Thank you.